Hi, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to produce learning curves using Weka. So learning curves are really important aspects in, in, in machine learning because using learning curves you can easily identify whether the learner you have generated it is overfitting or not. So there are two different ways to produce learning curves. So we are going to cover one in this tutorial and the next will next tutorial will show you how to do the second option to produce learning curves. So the first option to produce learning curve is to vary data. For example, if you have uh, 1000 instances in your data set, then you're going to produce a learner from 10% of this data and it produces an error rate. So you have the error rate for 10% of the data. In the next run, you can produce, you can just give uh, the classifier 20% of your data and you have the error rate for that 20% of the data. And this, in this way, you can, you can go up to 90% of the data you're fitting to your uh, classifier and you record the error rate for the 90% of the data. And then on the x-axis, you are having uh, the percentage of the data you fit to your classifier, 10% to 90%. And on the y-axis, you have the error rates for the, for the respective uh, amount of data and you just plot the error rate and that's your learning curve. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can do that, how you can produce learning curves just by varying the amount of data instances in your data set. So this is kind of tricky but bear with me. So we are going to choose Experimenter, we cannot do it on Explorer so we are going to choose Experimenter and this is interesting to know that previ previously we were sticking with uh, the simple configuration mode in Experimenter, but this time we have to go to Advanced. So we select Advanced and we have to click New because we're trying to create a new experiment. So now a uh, bunch of options have popped up. Now from these options, you can see that the first option is destination. This is uh, this is a minor thing. This is not significant because uh, in destination, you're just putting the file where you're going to save all of your results produced from this experiment. So you can have you can save them in CSV. You can save them in your database that I've never done, and you can also save them in your R file. So I can select instances results listener, and I just left click to edit the properties of this option. And again, I'm selecting the output file by left clicking it. And you can see that I can go to desktop and save it as 1.r. So this is not really significant for this tutorial. We just click on OK. Now, the important thing here is the result generator. So we have an option here. We click choose. You can see lots of options here. But you, if you are following my tutorials, then you know that I'm a cross-validation guy. So that's my favorite. I'm just save, I'm just selecting cross validation result producer. And as this option is selected, now I'm going to left click on it to edit the properties. So we left click on it, and this uh, editor opens. We have numbers of information and options there. Number of folds, output files, raw output. We are not interested in them. We are interested in split evaluator option. Now in split evaluator, we can choose several options. If you are if you are trying to create learning curve for a regression algorithm, then you can select regression split evaluator. But in this experiment, we are just trying to produce learning curves for a naive base classifier, which is a classification algorithm. So we are trying we are selecting classifier split evaluator. But you can see that you have other two options here as well. If you want to know more about them, then you can select the more button here. Now as you have selected the classifier split evaluator, we left click on this to edit the properties. Again, a property editor pops up and you have several options there. Attribute ID, class for IR statistics and print target column and you are not interested in them. So we're just trying to uh, select the classifier here and as I told you that we're trying to produce learning curves for naive based classifier, we can select naive based classifier directly from here, but I'm not going to do that because what we are trying to do here is we are trying to systematically uh, 
increase the amount of data to be fed to Nibis classifier. So in that case, we have to choose a meta classifier. And from the meta classifier, we are selecting filtered classifier. And now if we left click on this filtered classifier option, then we can select uh, our classifier called naive base. And as a filter, it's not going to be discretized, though it's it's the default there. But if you click on choose, then several filter options pop up. And from these options, you can select the Weka unsupervised instance filter called remove percentage because we are going to remove 10 percent 20 percent up to 90 percent of the data and we're going to fit them to nine base classified to see how much error rate it is producing for each of the individual percentage of data so now you can click ok click ok again and again so now it's done so runs are from 1 to 10 that's fine in generator properties it's disabled by default so you have to enable that and then you have an option popping up just like this. And in this option, expand split evaluator. Then you have another option called classifier, expand that too. And you have an option called filter, expand that. And you can see that you have percentage under filter. You select that and click on the select button. Now you can see something came up on, on, on this window, 50. So this is the percentage of the data you're going to feed to your Nibis classifier. For example, in our learning curve, we are, we are going to put nine error rates. One for 10%, the second for 20%, and the ninth for 90% of the data. Okay, so we are just going to uh, delete this one and add 10, 20, and this goes up to uh, 90. So I have given uh, nine intervals here ranging from 10% to 90%, and this amount of data will be provided to our nine base classifier. It will have error rates for 10%, 20%, up to 90%, and then we're going to plot them. This is the idea behind this. And as data set, we're going to click on add new, and from Weka data repository, we're going to select the iris.r file. We're clicking on iris.r file and click on open. Now we're going to we go to run tab and we just click on start. So you can see that our uh, process has started and finished. We don't we don't have any errors. We go to analyze tab. That's okay, and we click on experiment. Now from this comparison field here, you select the percentage incorrect, which which is the error rate synonymous so we click on perform test and you can see that we have nine error rates produced from the iris data set and the first one here 4.4 you can see that in this case our minus p is 10.0 this means that its error rate is 4.4 when we have excluded 10 percent of data from our data set so the error rate of naive base is 4.4 when it was working with 90% of the data. We just took out 10% of it. Now the second column here is 4.47. This means that the naive base classifier's error rate is 4.47 when we took out 20% of the data randomly from our data set. Okay, so these are the error rates for the nine base classifier for 10% to 90% interval of the data that are taken out from the original data set. Now, if we plot them in an Excel file, so I have the Excel file here, so we have, uh, so these are, these are not the data, these are the data taken out. Okay, so these are the data taken out from the original data set. 10% taken out, nine base error rate is 4.4, 20% taken out, night base error rate is 4.47, and we only have 10% of the data that is 90% taken out, the error rate is 15.67. So if you if you select them, go to insert and, and put a scatter plot here, you can see this is the 
learning curve for our naive classifier as we have varied the in amount of instances in our data set from 10% uh, to 90% uh, as we have removed this amount of data from our data set. So from this learning curve with naked eye, you can see that the naive base classifier that we have produced on Iris data set, it performs the best with 90% uh, of the data in the data set. And it performs the worst when we have taken most of the data, we are just keeping 10% of the data for its training and test, or I mean cross validation. So you can see, you can say that the nine base classifier you have produced performs the best when the when you have when you are keeping most of the data in your data set as we have varied the instances number of instances in our data set so i think and hope and believe that this was helpful for you to produce learning curves using weka in the next tutorial it's going to be a follow-up of this uh tutorial where we are going to see how you can produce learning curves by not varying the data but varying different parameters of your algorithm thank you very much